Hello everyone and welcome to my brand new series City Review. Today's subject is the city of Prague which I'm going to rate based on a number of variables. These are public transit, core policy, space management, climate policies, housing policy and public safety. Let's get started. Just like most European cities, Prague has a dense, extensive public transit network that goes pretty much everywhere. Train lines cover most of the suburbs, providing convenient access to the city center. Most of them operate Škoda double-decker city elephant multiple units, but you can also find more exotic, smaller diesel multiple units. Our trip takes us to Prague main station, right in the center. Yeah, this thing could use some cleaning. The station is impressive, though not that big or busy by European standards, serving only about 70,000 passengers per day. Going down the escalator, we find ourselves in the main underpass. Look, no ceiling! The new station lobby, built around the 70s, looks like a retro space station. For the historical lobby, we have to go up the escalator. The old station building is absolutely beautiful. Oh look, there's the underpass. But now we are ready to step outside and experience the beauty of... Fuck. This looks like an urban freeway. Because unfortunately it is. Thankfully it's a Sunday, so traffic is minimal. This place used to be a nice and quiet cobblestone promenade with trees and tram lines, but thanks to Soviet megalomania it was all given over to cars. More on this subject later. We need to get through this mess, and for that we need the underpass. I'd love to marvel at the station building, but the highway sign is in the way. Across the station, what used to be a nice green park, is now a concrete parking lot. I feel like I'm being fried alive here, so time to get going. Navigating a maze of metal railings, seriously whose idea was this, we find our way to these futuristic staircases that no one uses to take us down to the main entrance. In here it's even hotter than in the parking lot, and it smells like urine and feces, the human variety. Locals call the park in front of the station Sherwood, by the way, after all the dodgy people who congregate here. In Sherwood, various shenanigans are a daily occurrence. That being said, public safety in Prague is top-notch. There are no unsafe areas. Aside from Prague main station, there is also Mosarykovo, a smaller, beautiful end station next to it for commuter trains. The tram stops right in front of it, allowing for a smooth transition. Though inside it's very retro. Welcome. Welcome to City 17. My Thankfully, the building will see complete modernization in the coming years. And apparently there is a doctor's office in here. I'm not going in there. My kidneys are doing just fine inside me. Aside from trains, the next largest public transit system is the metro. Prague has three metro lines, A, B and C, with D having broken ground recently. We're now on metro B, the yellow line, the last line to open in 1985. It has that vaguely futuristic design, today considered more retro, running domestically overhauled Soviet metro trains. Metro A is my favorite though, with its neat station design that even games like Deus Ex Mankind Divided chose to include. The three metro lines connect almost all major transit hubs in the city, with more extensions and of course Metro D to come. Getting a ticket is easy. At the stops you'll find these ticket machines that sell time-based tickets for the entire Prague integrated transit network. These smaller, card-only machines can also be found on board of every bus and tram. The ticketing system is neat. Tickets and passes are very cheap. A monthly pass costs 22 euros, which is now about 22 dollars. Tickets and passes are valid for the entire city and much of its suburbs, depending on the type of pass you buy. All Prague public transit is integrated into one continuous system, which is massive. 
Here's a map of the train lines and the metro and tram lines and metro, bus and trolleybus lines. But despite the dense and efficient public transit network, cars rule most of the city. Here, at this pedestrian crossing, when you try to get across, you have a grand total of 7 seconds to make it happen. There are simply too many goddamn cars in this city. They are everywhere. Let's stop at the beautiful Powder Tower, a 15th century architectural landmark behind the traffic signs with cars going through underneath it. This sidewalk is about 5 cm wide, fanning out into a luxurious 50 cm while cars get around 4 meters. The Prague city center just wasn't built for cars. But this doesn't stop people from driving in with their gigantic SUVs as there are absolutely no restrictions on car traffic. We are now in New Town because Prague also has an even older city center. A real, virtually intact medieval core with tiny, narrow streets and actual medieval buildings as both world wars avoided the city. And it's full of cars. Even the narrowest streets aren't free from car traffic. I cannot understate how annoying this is. to walk down these beautiful medieval streets only to encounter more metal boxes. A beautiful medieval cathedral, you say? Let's squeeze a car in there! A UNESCO-protected, fully intact Baroque town square? It looks like a great place for a parking lot! The only truly car-free areas are the parts where cars physically wouldn't fit, the Prague Castle district. But for that, you have to climb a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. And some more. But once you're up, the panorama can't be beat. There was even a ceremony of sorts up there by the presidential guard, who solemnly transport the brand new liver for the Czech president's weekly transplant. The Prague Castle area is beautiful, quiet, and very atmospheric. But going down, we're soon back to Otto land. I have no idea why they let this stand in the year 2022. It's the most frequented tourist area in Prague, people barely fit on the sidewalks, and they give most of the space to cars. Worse, cars screw up the historic cobblestone surface. Contrast is to pedestrian-only streets that are much nicer and livelier. Otherwise, enjoy your 40 centimeters of sidewalk because you ain't getting more. Prague desperately needs some sort of restriction on private motor traffic. This cannot go on any longer. Despite all this, the city remains very walkable, courtesy of the old medieval and 19th century grid. Bike infrastructure is in its infancy though. Throughout me filming all this, I don't recall seeing a single cyclist. Granted, public transit takes you everywhere, but that's no excuse. The problem, once again, is cars. They take up so much space that often there is barely any left for pedestrians, let alone protected cycling paths. So we're left with bicycle gutters at best. In terms of climate policy, i.e. heat resistance, results are mixed. There are lots of pleasant, shady areas, but all the urban freeways, paved surfaces and concrete monoliths act as heat radiators, turning surrounding areas inhospitable for humans. The city does have a strategy to improve the local climate, but nothing will change as long as cars rule the streets. The current mayor, Adam Scheinherr, is pro-pedestrian though. 
Under his rule, many areas were modified in favor of humans, like this pedestrian crossing at Motranska. Previously, there was only an underpass, which also served as a public toilet. You can imagine. Seeing this measure put in place, the local conservative district mayor filed a lawsuit to potentially get the crossing removed. Yep. Lots of underpasses were built in Prague during Soviet times, as cars were the priority back then. Thankfully, the city is now trying to get rid of them, despite the conservative party's best efforts. Prague's underpasses are just as terrible as everywhere else. This one leading to Prague main station is particularly notorious. Sandwiched between an urban freeway and a parking garage, it looks and smells like shit. Compare this to the original, beautiful, calm pomenade with trees, trams and the Hotel Wilson that used to stand in the place of the parking garage. Other districts are slowly moving towards pedestrianization though. The road on the river pomenade just got narrowed in favor of a wider sidewalk. And the area around the powder tower is going to be finally pedestrianized. Now all that's left is to tear down that urban freeway cutting the city in half. The one going in front of main station. It's so bad that you can find actual abandoned buildings along it during an ongoing housing crisis. Housing prices are out of control. A 2 plus 1 60 square meter apartment farther away from the center will cost you a quarter of a million dollars or euros. As for rent prices, get ready to spend one half to two thirds of your salary for a tiny apartment far out at the edge of the city. This is due to a lack of new housing being built, due to notoriously slow bureaucracy and the uncontrolled spread of Airbnb and similar short-term rentals. The latter is an even bigger issue. Let me illustrate. If you've ever been to Prague, you know that the streets in the center are absolutely full. Literally. Sometimes it's physically impossible to fit, there are just so many people. During Covid restrictions, however, I went around the center and was shocked to find it completely empty. Not a single soul. Anywhere. Not even Old Town Square or Charles Bridge. That's because almost nobody lives in the Prague Center anymore. It's all short-term rentals. I've read stories about Russian and Chinese oligarchs buying out entire residential blocks to operate them purely as short-term rentals. And this whole business operation is made to look like a friendly local thing where a guy called Peter from Prague lets you stay in his apartment for a few nights. The problem is there are 10 other Peters from Prague, all working for the same shell company owned by someone from mainland China. This drives up rent prices for the rest of us and prices out essential workers like teachers, nurses, garbage collectors and so on. Unfortunately, there are no restrictions on short-term rentals whatsoever, so this shit show is left to freely continue. Alright, it's time to review the results. Public Transit gets a solid 9 out of 10, comprised of coverage a 10 out of 10, quality a 7 out of 10, and affordability a 10 out of 10. Car policy is a 2 out of 10, comprised of pedestrian and cyclist priority a 3 out of 10, and restriction policy 1 out of 10. Space management gets 5 out of 10, made up of walkability 8 out of 10, and bike infrastructure 2 out of 10. Climate policy is a 5 out of 10, and housing policy is 1 out of 10, affordability 1 out of 10, and short-term rentals 1 out of 10. And finally, public safety 9 out of 10. Overall, I give Prague 5 out of 10. Plenty of good aspects, but many of those exist in spite of city policies, not because of them. It's a nice place to visit as a tourist, but once the newness wears off, the reality will be somewhat disappointing. Some of the issues are getting resolved though, so within the next decade, Prague might climb all the way to a solid 7. Or if conservatives manage to take over the city, then a solid 3. And I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this first episode of City Review. There will be more to come, so make sure to subscribe, and I also have a Patreon if you want to support me doing content like this. And I'll be seeing you next time.